My name is Dave Helgeson. I want to welcome you back to the series we're doing on boondocking. Uh, in the first episode, we talked about what boondocking is and why an RVer would want to boondock. In the last installment, we talked about uh, public lands where you can boondock. And in this installment, we're going to get the meat and potatoes and the fun part of this is we're going to find those actual boondocking spots uh, using our computer before we ever leave home so we can plan our trip. So let's get started. So this episode, as I said, is boondocking, finding a place to camp. Through the years I've been doing this and posting my pictures all over the place as well as Facebook, all my friends always ask me, well, how do you find such cool places to camp? And you know what? I say that's easy. You just look for the signs. Uh, now, it won't be quite as easy as the picture there. You're not going to find signs that say park here or boondock here. Um, but there are signs. You're going to see them from space via Google Earth before you ever leave home or wherever you decide to look for camping spots from. So let's take a look. Now, before we go farther, I want to talk about one thing. So, you know, a lot of other websites you go to will say, well, others will tell you about Boondock and say, well, they'll tell you to go pick a camp spot and drop your RV off and explore for a couple days on your tow with your toad or dinghy or your tow vehicle and find a spot. But, you know, that's time consuming. And what happens is there isn't a campground we want to talk, so park. And I'm saying there's a better way. And let's show you what that is. So there's two things you're going to need to do. Uh, Boondocking, if you want to do it the easy way, is you're going to need Google Earth, uh, which can be downloaded for free online at googleearth.com. We'll share a link at the end of the series here. And you're also going to need some kind of onboard navigation. Uh, it could be a handheld GPS, it can be built in navigation, uh, it can be a Garmin Nuvi, is what I use. Uh, anything as long as you can or enter coordinates onto it. Because there's one problem with boondocking, is unlike a campground where you have a physical street address, in the boondocks, there's no such thing as 123 Boondock Lane, the Sticks, Nevada. It doesn't exist. So you're going to be navigating by coordinates. Uh, coordinates are a unique address anywhere in the world, so they can help you navigate quite well. Let's continue. So on Google Earth, uh, it's what you're going to want to look for is you're going to want to look for spots uh, on public land, which we talked about last week, where you see these little roads trail off and um, not really go anywhere. Guaranteed, if those are on public lands, those are campsites. Uh, and you're going to be very proficient at this once you start doing it. So this picture spot's near George Washington. It's just off I-90. I just use it for an overnight spot. I need to somewhere just right off the freeway. It's less than a mile off the freeway. Uh, here's the spot in reality, which is about right there. Uh, it's just a matter of capturing the information on Google Earth and navigating that site. You've got to admit, it's a pretty spectacular camp spot for free. Like I said, just use it for an overnight spot, left the next morning. Let's look at another example. Uh, looking on Google Earth, you're looking from space. Quite often, you'll actually see other RVs on the ground. Uh, by using the methods I showed you in the last uh, installment, you'll know this was public land already. This is a reservoir down in Utah. Uh, this particular spot pictured over here is actually this spot right on the ground. You'll see the, the trees, beautiful lake view, mountains, all there. It's all for free. This is about 100 miles from Capitol Reef um, National Park. We need a spot to camp for the night before we enter the park. We want to get there early to get a good camp spot. So what's Google Earth going to tell you? Um, lots of useful information. If you're not a Google, Youth, Google Earth user already, here's what you want to look for. is Down in the bottom corner is the scale. Uh, depending on how far you zoom in, we'll tell you how, uh, what the scale is. In this case, that's, that's 128 feet. By using that scale, you can f determine how long a camp spot might be uh, by just scaling it against things on the ground. You'll get an idea how far it is off the paved road. Most importantly, the coordinates down here at the bottom. You're going to need those to navigate the site. And elevation. Uh, you don't really need to know how high you're camping. In this case, it's 7,000 feet. And more importantly, when you run your cursor along the road, it's going to tell you if that road goes uphill, downhill, or it's level. Uh, very important for looking at a camp spot to determine if it's level or not. Uh, also, it tells you how steep or the road would be getting to that campsite. Obviously, if it you know, drops 100 feet in 100 yards, it's pretty steep. You're probably not going to want to take your RV up or down that. So a lot of information can be gathered on that. And we'll go live on Google Earth here in a bit and, and look at how that works. And then, of course, you have a compass rose up in the top right corner, which will show you uh, orient you on the map. So if you don't have Google Earth already, get it. It's free. You don't need the advanced version, uh, just the free version online. So let's look a little farther on, on Google Earth. What's it going to tell you? Well, again, from above, you can see these spots that go out and just die out in the desert. Uh, this particular spot is Hole in the Rock Road. If you know your uh, Mormon history much, you know that the Mormons went out and literally built a trail over the cliffside to cross the San Juan River down in southeast Utah. A lot of history out there. There's a lot of slot canyons, which in the previous installment I talked about my wife and I like to explore spot canyons. So we need to camp down here. Uh, this particular 
spot was right about right here. You see, it, this is in reality. Uh, here's this road. You're seeing the road in the foreground. Um, boom, we had our camp spot, Highway 12, right up here is paved, not very far off the map, and all for taking a look on Google Earth. So I'm going to switch here. We're going to go to a spot called publiclands.org. I talked about that in the last installment. And I'm going to show you how you're going to use this to determine public land, how you might use it. So this is the website, publiclands.org. Definitely a good use um, for boondocking. It covers the 11 western states, uh, each state individually. So what you want to do is you can click on the state you're interested. In this case, I'm going to show you how you would find and determine that spot on the Hole in the Rock Road and if it's legal to camp there or not. You see Utah fills in. You go over here to the search location. I'm just going to put Escalante, Utah, because that's the closest thing. I'm going to spell it right. There we go. And we're going to we're going to zoom in on that. It's going to take us there. And we're going to use the zoom function down here at the bottom right. And this is a clunky site. It takes a lot of bandwidth, so if you don't have fast internet, you're going to find it a little frustrating. And then we're going to go to satellite view. Right here, you see me putting the finger on it here. We're going to click on satellite view, so it's going to show us the actual ground image, so we see the same thing we just were looking at on the PowerPoint slide. And we're going to zoom in down here on Highway 12. And it's going to start looking familiar to you here in a minute, right off the bat. Now you see that spot is just showing you on the slide right down in here. You see those roads that dance off into nowhere. Now several clues right off the bat. You're going to see the, the right here I'm circling BLM 200. Right there it tells you that's BLM land because the road's controlled by the BLM. But if you're still doubtful on that, here's where it gets really useful. Go down here and click on land status. And that's going to take a minute to fill in, but it's going to bring up, just like we saw in the last installment on the U.S. Public Lands apps, just turn that all orange. And what's that going to tell us is if you scroll on the screen, it's going to tell us right here, this is Bureau of Land Management land. So we know that's all BLM. All we have to do is go on the BLM website for that area. It'll tell us you can camp there for two weeks for free. You've got to move after two weeks, uh, 25 miles. So now we know that is a legal spot to camp. Let's give you an idea. We'll zoom out here. And you'll see that there's National Monument land right next door. So again, BLM land, National Monument land. We know that BLM land is very friendly to boondockings. We know anywhere in that area. Uh, is open to, to, to boondocking. Uh, very useful. You can actually determine coordinates on this too. It's kind of clunky and like I said, it's slow to load unless you have super fast internet. So we're going to go back. Um, I typically will go back to Google Earth to get the exact coordinates for these turns and stuff to navigate my way there. So great site. You can also get the same information on the app that I showed you in the last installment. So either way, uh, publiclands.org or the public lands app. Great way to tell when you're on public land. I'll go back to slideshow here. So let's look at some more examples. Um, this is down in Panamint Valley, California. This is this the valley over from Death Valley. I like to use this slide because this is how my wife and I got started in it. There's a, a lot of old mining history. There's a ghost town called Ballarat, California, way back there across the valley. It's about six miles across a very bumpy dirt road. I thought, we are not taking our RV down that. The nearest developed campground from here is about 30 miles away. And so I told my wife, we've got to find a way to do it. Getting on Google Earth, I can see this road that goes in here, kind of circles. I thought, well, it's like something we can turn the RV around it. It's BLM land. We knew it was legal to camp on it. So uh, we grabbed the coordinates for this spot. We navigated to that. And without even hesitating, I turned down that road. And as advertised, we had a nice camp spot out in the desert. We spent a couple days and explored from there. Um, we were kind of hooked once we got to that point after realizing how easy it could be. Another example, I talked in the previous installment how my wife and I like to do slot canyon hunting. Um, there's some canyons that run out of here. You can clearly see the, where the road goes in here and these little spots die off. Guarantee you see those, they're on public land, they are camp spots. Uh, more often than not nowadays, with the resolution getting so good, you can see the campfire rings from space. So it's just a matter of grabbing the coordinates for this turn, Driving in there, finding a spot that looked good. This particular campsite you see pictured here was right there in these big old cottonwood trees. All for free. Stay up to two weeks. Uh, we spent several days exploring the canyons in that area. Closer to our, the northwest, where I live, uh, here's some examples. Quincy Lakes. I talked about um, fish and wildlife areas previously. This is, this is Quincy Lakes. It's open to fishing. Uh, you can see all these little spots that trail off and end. Guaranteed camp spots. This spot on this little peninsula you see is right here in reality. 
Uh, also, I off road um, spot near Moses Lake, Washington. Again, it makes it real easy when the RVs pop up on the internet. Um, when you look at Google Earth, you can clearly see the RVs on the ground here. Uh, here's a spot in reality. We spent a couple days over there, ATV and, and motorcycle riding. Again, see if you see that the RVs. Anything time you see something casting a shadow, you know it's fairly tall. It gives you a good clue, even the resolution is not great. That could be an RV. Uh, so here, riverfront camping. This bridge here is this bridge in reality. You can see the paved highway right here. It's just a matter of capturing those coordinates and navigating to a site like that. All for free. So Google Earth has another function that's really becoming more useful. It's what's called satellite view. If you've ever seen the Google Earth car run around with a big camera on the roof, um, they drive all the paved roads in the United States and start to do some dirt roads, uh, capturing a 360 degree image on it. So if you click on the little guy over here and the road turns purple when you hold him over that, that means the Google Earth car is driven down that. Tons more information you can gather off it. This particular site is near um, Boulder Caves in, in Washington. It's a spot I'd never been. We wanted to explore that. I said, well, where's the closest boondocking spot? Running down Highway 410. Again, you see an area like this where obviously vehicles have accessed and it doesn't go anywhere. I already determined this is Forest Service land using the public lands website. I knew it was available for two weeks of camping. So by clicking on the little guy and dropping him on the road, you'll actually get a view of there. I don't know if you can see it back there. Here's Mr. Winnebago sitting back there camping. It tells me several more things. A, it confirms that camping is available. B, if a two-wheel drive Winnebago uh, can make it in there with low clearance, I can definitely get in there my truck and travel trailer. Camp spot found. It's just a matter of now capturing these coordinates for this turn. As I come down the highway, my onboard navigation is going to say turn right in 250 feet. Boom, campground found for the night. It really is that easy. So I'm going to blip out of this again. We're going to go to Google Earth again, and we're going to show you how this works. We, my wife and I typically get to spend quite a bit of time in this, the southwest. We head out of Washington, so we go down to Highway 84 quite often. And we need a spot to camp off the road. So Fort, Farewell Bend State Park was a spot we'd stayed numerous times. Let's see if I can get to come up here. There it is. Oops, that's not it. Bear with me. There it is. And we'd stay in the state park numerous times. I thought, you know, this time we just really need an overnight spot. So employing my boondocking methods here, I said, let's see what we can find. It's not going to cost us. We just pull in for the night. So there's the state park where we normally would stay. All right here's Highway 84 or Interstate 84, so I said, well, let's see what's downriver. I determined there was some um, fish and wildlife property just down, down here along the bend in the river. So by scrolling in tight there, we can start to see these little telltale sign places like right here where you see vehicles clearly gone out there and turned around. Um, we want to take a look at that from Google Earth. We click on the little guy there, see it up in the right-hand screen. We bring him down, see how the road turns purple off to the left there. It'll take you right down at street level. And I can take a look at that spot. And I see it's big enough to hold my RV. It's got a view of the river. It's kind of close to the highway, so not a favorite spot, but I can sure capture those coordinates uh, right down here and navigate to that spot if I want to. But I will typically look to see if there's other spots, this case by chance, especially when it's a small spot like that, if there are other camp spots nearby. So I continue to work down the river. Another half mile or so here. You can see another, there's another telltale spot here, right here where people obviously pulled off. You can zoom in on that. Now up here you can see, start to see some, looks like other RVs already camped there, so that's always a good indication. If you know it's public land, there's RVs in there. So I think, well, that's worth a view. I'm going to go over here, click on the Google Earth guy again. You see how the road kind of turns blue there. I'm going to drop him. And I'm looking down the road, and that also tells you it's a pretty decent road by looking at it. And I'm going to scroll left. Now, what do we see? We see a ton of RVs there, don't we? You, know, you think you can boondock there? Now, it's worth noting that you notice we saw three RVs from space, but we only see, we see many more RVs in reality. The imagery date's not always the same. Obviously, the satellites flew over a different time than the Google Earth car, car drove down the road. So in this case, the Google Earth car drove down the road in April 2012. And if we exit Street View, you see that date will change. 
It's now saying September 28th of 2015. That was just a few months ago. Um, so that's why the images don't agree. It also tells you how dated a footage you're looking at is in regards to um, the spot. So obviously, if they're in September 2015, we're in March of 2016 right now, if you saw RVs camp there six months ago, odds are it's still to your advantage. Now, when you see there's multiple spots to camp through here, I'm also going to show you how that elevation feature works again. So down here, right here where I'm running the cursor, you'll see elevation. Now if I take that, the cursor here and run it, you're going to see that changes very little along that road. See it drops about three feet coming in. So I can look at these, these better cam spots, it's like here's one of the tree, I can see it shadowing. How much does this change? By running the cursor over it, you can see it only changes a couple feet and here's the scale down here, it only changes a few feet over 100 feet. Odds are I can level up my RV on that. Now I'm also seeing some nice beachfront property down here in a road. So what's, I can take a look at this. Well, if you watch the cursor here on the elevation, you can see it changes quite a bit. That's a fairly steep grade. Odds are I'm not going to get a longer RV down. If you have a truck camper on a four-wheel drive truck, odds are you can go down there and camp right on the beach. So the elevation feature tells me a lot. It tells me that entering this from the road, uh, you can see about 2,094 feet and it's 2,087 feet. It drops seven feet over a very long run. Not going to be an issue for the average RV. So the last thing I'll do to verify this is a good, good spot to camp is I'm going to drop it right back here where that actually turns in, and I'm going to scroll to the left again. It shows me, A, it's not gated, so there's no restrictions, obviously, for public access. I can see it's, you know, obviously not paved or gravel, but I don't see any big holes or logs or anything that's going to keep me from navigating there. Plus, I see the other RVs that are already there, Obviously, some are much longer than mine are. And so, I, hey, I can get there. Camp spot found for the night, right on the river, all for free. But just in case that were to be full, I can continue down the river and take another peek to see if there's other options. You can just go down here a little bit. Now, what do we see down here? We actually see a campground, a private RV resort. You can see the RV spaces up in here. There's an RV parked in there. Uh, right next door, though, we see this telltale spot where people have been pulling off again. If I can say, hey, what's that about? I can grab the Google Earth guy again, drop him right there at the entrance to that spot, and we'll scroll left, and boom, what do we see? We see about a 36-foot tandem motor, axle motorhome in there camping. Scroll a little more, we got a guy over here with a truck camper, um, easy access level. Um, in reality, this is a fishing access site. You can see the boat launch ramp here. Um, so it's, it's public fishing game land. So it's told us a lot of information using Google Earth. You know, if you were doubtful, it gives you everything you need. You got the coordinates to get there. You know what the access looks like. You know the campsite's level before you ever get there. All for free. Get on there and use it. So we'll go back to our PowerPoint now and we'll continue. Excuse me, one click. So we looked at that. Now what's that Snake, Snake River site look like? There's our spot in reality. There's the tree I was just talking about. There's my truck and trailer. You can see it's a pretty spectacular spot for an overnight spot, totally free. All compliments of Google Earth and a little bit of research. Here it is, you know, a little closer, we're taking advantage of the shade tree, we've got our lounge chair setting out there, pretty sweet camp spot. So I can tell you other things too. Um, here's a spot down in, in Nevada, this is near Good Springs, Nevada. It's, the town itself is an old mining town, it features the oldest continuous operating saloon in the state of Nevada. Uh, we were there for the mining history. In fact, in the slide, you look up here, there's some old mining ruins up there. We wanted to camp in a re area. Again, using the satellite view of Google Earth, it's like, yeah, it looks kind of scrubby, gray, uninviting. I wasn't finding many spots to camp in. As you learn to read Google Earth, you say, well, there's a big spot right there. Well, actually, that's a wash. And if you know anything about desert camping, you never camp in a wash unless you absolutely know it's not going to rain. Bad things can happen. Uh, but in my case, I'm looking up here. I see that little, little scar there. I can determine using the scale down here, which doesn't show very good, that that's 50 feet long. My rig is 50 feet long, so I know I can pull up that road back in and, and have a camp spot. Now typically when you're looking at roads on Google Earth, if you see that center stripe of vegetation, you know it's not traveled very well. It's obviously not graded. There wouldn't be vegetation in the middle. So I'm always a little leery on those. By using Google Earth, I can take the Google Earth guy, drop there. I can see this, this road right here. I can see it going in there. I know the brush along the sides is not too tall. It's not going to scratch my rig. I can see the vegetation down the middle is, you know, can affect my travel anyway. I can see the, the dip off the, the highway when I exit there. 
And I see it's really not that great at all. It's quite green and lush. There are Joshua trees out here and, and typical desert camping. Camp spot found. It's just a matter of grabbing those coordinates for that turn right there and navigating to it. Uh, typically, I will not even bother to walk into a campsite first, being that I could, knew this road dead end. I knew if I drove up there, could not turn around there, I'd probably get me in deep trouble. So this is one of the few instances where I actually got out of my vehicle. I walked there first to make sure I get my RV up, back in that spot, and then pull out when we're done. Um, I'll be a Google Earth, did it from Seattle before we ever, ever left and found a spot, you know, eight, nine hundred miles away, had our camp spot already picked out. Unlike those other people tell you, well, you drive down there, you park, and you drive around for two or three days. This is much easier. Okay, as we've been navigating Google Earth, you've seen these little blue pictures popping up now and then. What these are is these are pictures posted by other Google Earth users that they have taken and found that they want to share. Quite often there's useful information to be had there. Not only what you can see on the ground, but you'll also find camp spots on this. So scrolling over these, they'll, they'll light up. You see this one pops up, says, just me, the rocks, and the trees. Well, that sounds intriguing. So I pop on it. Boom, here's a guy that was obviously in their camp and it was Mini Cooper. Uh, I can see right in here there's a fire ring. I know Mini Cooper's probably you know, 10, 12 feet long. I can determine this is a fairly long site, plus Google Earth will tell me the scale. I can see out here in the Joshua trees, some beautiful rock formations. That, well, that works for me, and I'm going to back up just a tick here. So I have a choice of coming in down here or up here. Well, being this looks a little closer, plus I see other little scar areas where there's probably camp spots, I'm going to grab that coordinate right there. The reason we wanted to camp here is right here there's a trail. Uh, that takes off. It's a hike that my wife and I wanted to do. So we wanted to camp fairly close so we wouldn't spend all day driving to the camp spot. Um, hopefully we'd just be able to walk to it. You see the scale here is that's approximately 900 feet. So if we camped here, we'd be about a quarter mile away. Uh, so we camped even closer, uh, less of a walk. So after doing that, we pulled in there. Boom. We turned off the road. We saw that spot before we got the spot that was with the blue square. I told my wife, it's like, do we really need to travel any farther to find that other spot? Here we are in a beautiful spot along the Joshua trees. We've got a nice big juniper. It was warm. We were traveling with a dog at that time of year. We had our built-in shade. And literally we walked 100 yards across the street to pick up the hiking trail we wanted the next morning. Uh, all for free, all compliments of Google Earth. And you're going to find a spot that beautiful in a public or private camps ground um, very seldomly if you do. So great stuff. So here's another example. This is down in... Um, San Rafael Swell and, and the main part of Utah. You see the bunch of blue squares again. Uh, here's the telltale signs that run, the roads run out here and peter out. Guaranteed, this is BLM land. You see those, there's camp spots at the end of them. The reason we wanted to be here, there's a slot canyon called Little Horse, Little Wild Horse Canyon. It's right down over here. So I'm looking at a paved road. We don't have to go too far in uh, to find a spot a couple miles from the camp spot. By clicking on these blue squares, Here's one that says winter camping near Goblin Valley. Uh, camping being the key word, why we're in the area, we also wanted to visit Goblin Valley State Park, which is literally five miles from the spot. It does have campground. It has, I believe, 19 spots. They're 20 some bucks a night, and you have to reserve them a year in advance. Uh, is that on my fun meter to try to plan when I'm going to be there from Seattle a year in advance to land there? No. Boondocking is a much better act alternative, plus it's free. So clicking on this square, Boom, here's the guy, he's a tent camper. You can see that the site is quite scenic, good stargazing, and you can see it's quite flat and wide open. Uh, can I get my RV in there? Yes, I can. Here's the spot in reality. Here's fire ring from previous camper. Um, there's the camp spot, you can see there's lots of spots to park. Another thing Google Earth could tell me, again, we were traveling with a dog. He was too elderly to go hiking with us. Uh, this was middle of October, it was still fairly warm down there. Using Google Earth and the elevation feature, I could determine that this would be shaded before I ever got there because this these ridge was to the south. Well, I'll know this, the sun shines from the south. By point up next to this ridge of rocks, I knew I'd have a shaded spot to leave our dog because uh, obviously no trees there. All compliments to Google Earth, found the spot before I left home and knew it would be a shaded spot in the afternoon. Um, you can determine so much in advance from Google Earth. So, and sometimes, as I mentioned in the previous thing, there are actually signs that tell you you're on public land, you can camp there before you ever get there. Um, so it's it, good stuff, great for boondocking. This concludes the finding the boondocking site using Google Earth. In the next installment, we're going to look at other methods to find boondocking sites in advance. In this case, you're not quite comfortable using Google Earth yet. They'll literally tell you, yes, you can camp here, here's the rules, and here's how to get there. Um, so that will be in the next installment. I want to thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you then.